Hamful Cadell was the Speaker of the Catalan Parliament until January, but have spent almost nine months in prison. The subject year old was held in March, facing charges of rebellion for her part in the 2017 push for Catalan independence. She spends 15 hours a day alone in her cell. If convicted, she faces up to 70 years in prison. Now, she is calling on the European Court of Human Rights, ICTER, to order her release. In a rare interview at the Ms. D. Enrique prison, Ms. Forkadell told the BBC that life in her subject meter square cell was proving difficult. Every day is very hard because you know you are innocent, but you don't know how many days and nights you will stay locked up, she said. I greatly miss my family and those I love. It is especially hard for my mother, who is 19 years old and suffers a lot. Also for my husband and my sons, I want to get out soon for them. When they come to see me, I see the suffering reflected in their eyes. At home in Sabadell, her husband Bernard Pedros is also having a hard time. It has broken the family, in a way. He said, my sons get on with their lives, but they are suffering too because their mother is not here. We have a one-year-old grandson, and she has not seen him growing. Now, he has started walking, and she is excited when we visit, but the lad does not recognize her, he said. Ms. Forkadell was the speaker of the Barcelona Parliament when it voted to declare Catalonia an independent republic on 27 October last year. Following a disputed note in the region a few weeks earlier, she spent a single night in jail that November before being released on bail. B.T. was sent back to prison in March. 2018. Her legal team are filing a petition with the editor in Strasbourg. Seeing Miss Falkdale is pre-trial, detention breaches her human rights. The trial is expected to begin in Spain in the new year. Spanish prosecutors allege that Miss Falkdale was part of a conspiracy to achieve independence illegally. S P E C I F I C A L L Y. That she allowed parliamentary debates on independence to go ahead despite warnings from Spain. Its constitutional court. Yet Ms. Forkadell insists she did nothing wrong. My role as Speaker of the Parliament cannot be to censor the debate. If there is a parliamentary majority which has been elected in free and democratic elections and which wants to speak about this subject, she said, My duty is to defend the sovereignty of Parliament, freedom of expression, political pluralism and the right of initiative of the deputies in a democratic parliament. The world has to be free. One has to be able to speak about everything. The only limit must be respect for fundamental rights. She said, eight other Catalan leaders are in jail, awaiting trial in connection with the October 2017 push for independence. They are Teresa Canilera. The Spanish government is delegate in Barcelona, denies there are political prisoners in Catalonia. Instead, she said, there are some politicians who, in exercising their responsibilities, broke the law. So the courts acted, and as a result, they are now in the hands of justice. She said, Spain's Supreme Court held an initial hearing on Tuesday to decide whether it was competent to hear the trial. Defense lawyers want the case to be tried by a court in Catalonia, but others have faith in the courts in Madrid. In Estere Modus leads the pro-Spain citizens party in the Barcelona parliament. I wish they had not done what they did, but they declared the independence, she said. They approved a rule which went outside. The Spanish constitution. They denied our rights. They silenced us as the opposition in the Parliament of Catalonia. I think that politicians have to answer it before the law, like any other citizen. 
to Scandinavian women tourists have been found dead in Morocco with cuts to their necks, the country's interior ministry said. Both bodies were found near the town of Inro, in the High Atlas mountain range, near the foot of North Africa, its highest peak, Mount Abko. The women, from Denmark and Norway respectively, have not yet been named. A police investigation has been launched into their deaths, the Interior Ministry statement said. The United States military says it has killed 62 fighters from the Islamist group Al-Shabaab in six airstrikes in Somalia. Five airstrikes on Saturday killed 32 militants, and a further two on Sunday killed 28, it said. In a statement, this were the deadliest air attacks in Somalia since November 2017, when the odds said it had killed 100 militants. Somalia has seen a sharp increase in the number of air strikes and casualties since President Donald Trump took office in the United States in January 2017. A tally by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism reveals that at least 400 people have been killed in air strikes. Since the beginning of 2017, far more than the previous 10 years combined, the latest strikes bring to at least 40 the number carried out in Somalia so far this year, compared with 35 recorded in 2017. The United States has a huge military base in neighboring Djibouti, from where it launches attacks on the militants. Mr. Trump gave the United States in a terror greater authority in March 20th, 17 to attack militants in Somalia. Traditionally, United States presidents have been wary of intervening in Somalia since 18 special forces soldiers died fighting militias in the capital Mogadishu in 1993, a battle dramatized in the film Black Hawk Down. No civilians were killed in the latest air strikes, which were carried out in coordination with the Somali government, the United States military said. Alongside our Somali and international partners, we are committed to preventing Al Shabaab from taking advantage of safe havens from which they can build capacity and attack the people of Somalia, the United States Africa Command said. Al Shabaab which is linked to Al-Qaeda, has not yet commented on the latest strikes. Somalia-based security think tank the Hero Institute said, in a report published in November, that Al-Shabaab had been forced to change tactics following the upsurge in air strikes. The institute said the group was now conducting fewer mass attacks on military bases but attacks on government offices and businesses which refused to pay. It taxes had increased markedly. The Art State Department, in its most recent report on terrorism, described Somalia as a terrorist, safe haven and said, El Shabaab remained a threat, despite suffering setbacks. The group retained control over large parts of the country, and the ability to carry out high-profile attacks using suicide bombers, explosive devices, mortars, and small arms. The report added, a popular tourist attraction has become the latest Chinese company to show solidarity with Huawei's chief finance officer, Man Wanzhou, who was arrested in Canada on 1st of December. Shenan Mountain Scenic Park in eastern Henan province said it would waive the 9美元, 40, Ticket fee for anyone carrying a Huawei phone. Miss Man, who was given bail in Canada, faces extradition to the US on charges of breaking Iran sanctions. Her case has up to tensions with China. Use Huawei phones, shoot grand photos on the mountain. A notice on the Shannon Park's social media account said, We wish friends around the world who support Huawei's success and bliss. The offer would last until 29 December, the South China Morning Post reported, but it was met with some criticism among China, 
is social media users who claimed it was discriminatory. Huawei phone owners are being offered other enticements too. They can get a 20% discount at a border in Beijing. Seen in Beijing, bring a Huawei phone and get 20% off. Similar to this story we covered yesterday, HTTPS, T, C, O, C, O, E, I, P, 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 Twitter, C, O, M, Secretary Lot, end of Twitter post by at Lu Ocean T. At least one firm has threatened to penalize anyone buying Apple products. A few days ago, Man Patty Shan Shan based LED and display manufacturer offered subsidies to any employees buying Huawei phones. It also pledged to fine anyone who bought an Apple iPhone, as prosecutors alleged Ms. Mel 46, used a Huawei subsidiary called Skycom to evade sanctions on Iran between 2009 and 2014.